Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU and today Apple has released iOS 10 to the general public in the form of 10.0.1. And in this video, we're going to go over not only what features iOS 10 has over its predecessor, just being iOS 9 in general, but also how this firmware does in fact affect jailbreaking and kind of what we can expect from the jailbreak community going forward and when we can most likely anticipate a brand new jailbreak for iOS 10. Now there are so many things at play here. So before we get into all of it, I just wanted to say, make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up and share it around because not only is the info in this video extremely important for prospective jailbreakers, but I'm also giving away a brand new iPhone 7. If you have yet to enter, details can be found here. I'm actually wrapping it up at the end of this weekend, so be sure to get your entries in as soon as possible if you want a chance to win an all new awesome iPhone 7. Of course, also click the subscribe button below next to my channel name. That way you won't miss out on any new details pertaining to future giveaways and of course jailbreaking. Also, let me know down below in the comments section if you are excited for iOS 10, jailbreaking, and the iPhone 7, and if you want new giveaways also for the iPhone 7 and future Apple products. All right, so with all that said, let's get straight into this. First of all, talking about iOS 10. So yeah, that's right, guys. Apple did release the first installment of iOS 10 to the masses, being iOS 10.0.1. So I do have an iPhone over here that we can actually go inside of settings, followed by general, and then software update. Of course, a non-jailbroken iPhone, so we can actually see this OTA software update. And you will notice we do have iOS 10, and it actually walks through all of the changes here. We have a very robust change log, so absolutely everyone who launches up settings, general software update to actually install and upgrade to iOS 10 will see this exact same change log here. Again, there's so many changes. You can actually tap on learn more right there and it delves into absolutely everything. Of course, breaking it down by category. We're going to go over some of the biggest ones here in this video. Of course, we are just on Apple's iOS 10 page right now, so we can kind of scroll through it and see what it actually features. Of course, if you're already well familiar with iOS 10 because it was announced in June, I've made so many videos on it since its announcement and since every subsequent beta release, then you can't actually skip ahead down below in the description there will be a table of contents with kind of just some general chapters in this video all right, now up first is the Messages app. There's so many new revisions just to the Messages app alone, guys. Of course, I cannot go over every single change just because there are way too many of them to cover in this video alone. But over to the left of the Messages field, before you actually type in a message or if you just tap on that little arrow right there, if you don't see these three buttons, you do again have these three buttons, the first of which is just to actually access your camera roll and of course to take new images. Next, we do have Digital Touch, basically the exact same Thing that we have on the Apple Watch, so we can send a digital touch just like so. But the new thing that we have, of course, is this little A here that is reminiscent of the App Store icon. That's because we have a brand new App Store just for the Messages application. So when we do tap on that right here, it brings up again this brand new App Store for Messages. You can search through it if you want to, or you can actually just view the featured ones here. And here's just a quick example of a Star Wars one. So whoops, we actually actually went to the Pixar one, but when we tap on the Star Wars one here, you can see we can purchase it if we want. And then of course it adds these little packs to our messages application. I'm not interested in that though, and we're not buying it in this video. But of course beyond that, probably one of the best additions to the messages app are the send effects. So you just have to hold down the send button there, and then you can change how the message actually appears on the receiving end. And if they are on a version earlier than iOS 10.0.1 or iOS 10 beta, then it will actually print it out just in a subsequent text that you of course will not see. But you can send those effects and if you want to take it even a step further you can send full screen effects just by going over to the screen tab there. Of course I'm sure most of you are well familiar with these by now so I'm going to tap on the little X to get out of there. Of course you do also have emoji suggestions now so quick type has definitely been improved and in fact you can even emojify things. So just scrolling through here on Apple's iOS 10 page Page. So throughout iOS 10, you'll just be able to tap to replace with emojis that do correspond to words that it picks out. Quick example of that, all you have to do is just type out your message or really whatever text field that you're in, you just tap on the emoji button and then it does highlight all of the words that you can replace with emojis. So as you can see, we can just tap on it like so and it does replace those words. I'm trying to get pizza there. 
All right, there we go. And speaking of emojis, all of them have been updated. In fact, all of the people have a brand new kind of Simpsons inspired look and there are new ones as well. But kind of beyond the whole social aspect of iOS 10, Siri is now open to applications, which is absolutely phenomenal. So developers can actually make use of a brand new Siri API to allow their app to do cool things like what's listed in this demo here, have Lyft hail a ride. That's pretty epic in my opinion. Now moving on, developers can now make better use of the Maps application with another API. And of course, we do have the Home app, which interfaces with your smart home devices. Two of the ones that you'd be most likely to purchase would be the Philips Hue light bulbs and the August lock for your door. The music app has been fully redesigned for iOS 10. We now have Raise to Wake for the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, and of course the upcoming iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. So that's pretty epic. All you have to do is actually just raise your device up and the screen lights up. That's really cool. We also have new 3D touch actions for calendar, weather, and stocks. And kind of finishing up here, we do have more enhanced notifications. Of course, contextual predictions, better ones like what I said before. That that do also include emojis. Now, a redesigned look for the news application, better search, improved photos in general, a new machine learning algorithm for photos that will intelligently pick out memories. And then of course we have Apple Pay on the web. We have multilingual typing. So that's definitely a thing for those of you who are bilingual or who know more than two languages, you can finally switch between the two more fluidly. All right, guys, so that wraps up all of the biggest features of iOS 10. But now, how does it actually impact jailbreaking and what can we expect from jailbreaking? Now, if you happen to watch my recent video talking about iOS 10 GM and 10.0.1, or my video from a couple of weeks ago already talking about what to expect from jailbreaking once iOS 10 drops, then most of this information will just be a recap for you. But we're going to go over it again in today's video because we have yet to hear anything from Pangu, the primary jailbreak team on the scene. Of course, this is absolutely key. Official jailbreak developers never give ETAs or announcements of what they're actually working on. They just drop utilities. So if you see anyone claiming to have any sort of a status update from Pangu or Taiji, then definitely just disregard it because chances are good it is not official. Also, there are going to be so many fakes that start to prop up across the web now that iOS 10 is officially released in the form of 10.0.1. So definitely don't believe anything you hear and have half of what you see. That means if individuals are dropping videos demonstrating an iOS 10 jailbreak, that can still be faked, guys. I'm telling you, it has been done before and it will continue to be done in the future. It's an infinite loop and it will never end. People will always fake jailbreaks. I'm telling you right now that the only way a team can actually gain credit is by releasing utilities, which we're about to talk about right now. We're going to look back at what Pangu has already done and kind of compare it against what we can expect now that iOS 10 is official. Okay, so starting back with the only two real reference points that we have that are similar to today's situation, we have iOS 8's release and iOS 9's release. The former of which was the first jailbreak that Pangu released for a major iOS version because of course they didn't enter the jailbreak scene until the days of iOS 7.1.x after the evader's last evasion jailbreak utility dropped. All right, so first of all, starting with iOS 9, we can see that the firmware was released to the general public on September 16th, 2015. And then fast forward just about a month later, in fact, it's less than a month, on October 14th, 2015, they dropped the jailbreak for iOS 9.0.2. So guys, in less than a month, we got a jailbreak for iOS 9. Well, now you may be saying, what about iOS 8? which is really as far back as Pangu's history goes, especially when we're talking about the first major iOS releases. I'm glad you asked because guess what? We have the exact same situation. iOS 8 was released to the public on September 14th, 2014, and the jailbreak was released just over a month later on October 22nd, 2014. So we definitely have a pattern establishing here. It seems as though Pangu has an internal deadline to get a new jailbreak for a brand new firmware out about a month after Apple pushes out the initial version. And of course, because they did release iOS 10.0.1 today, September 13th, 2016, we can hopefully expect a jailbreak at the latest by the end of October, guys, not counting any unforeseen complications or issues that may pop up along the way. But one thing that actually does go to kind of further the case that we will get a jailbreak sooner rather than later is the fact that Pangu actually already jailbroke iOS 10. Granted, this was the first beta iteration 
version of iOS 10, but at MoSec 2016 or the Mobile Security Conference at the beginning of July, they actually demonstrated an iOS 10 jailbreak. Now, we can rest assured that the exact same exploits will not carry over from iOS 10 beta 1 to iOS 10.0.1, the public version, but what we do know is that of course it is jailbreakable and that Pangu is already on it. Remember guys, they're absolutely killing it as of late. They're the primary source for new jailbreak utilities. So as you can see here, these images were just taken from their keynote on the official Mosec Weibo account iOS 10 beta jailbroken. Furthermore, what's even better on top of the fact that they were already able to jailbreak iOS 10 beta 1 is the fact that iOS 10 doesn't have anything equivalent to last year's rootless security measures. Now, as many of you know, rootless was rumored to kind of be the end of jailbreaking. Granted, it never really translated to meaning not being able to achieve root access. However, it definitely was a hurdle that Pangu had to overcome before a new jailbreak was released. And as you guys saw, just by looking back at some of my past videos, they were able to do so and release a jailbreak for iOS 9 in less than a month, record time, faster than they were even able to do so for iOS 8. So we're definitely confident, especially with the iOS 10 beta jailbreak. The only thing that we really foresee as being a complication, of course, is the brand new A10 CPU powering Apple's iPhone 7 and 7 Plus that will undoubtedly take some hands-on time to actually get it functioning properly on those devices. So hopefully Pangu will be at the ready and they'll have a brand new iPhone or multiple iPhone 7s on launch day this Friday, again the 16th. Also, another good thing is that the kernel, even on 64-bit devices, is unencrypted now. So that means that potentially other individuals who might not have ever had any sort of interest in jailbreaking, but did kind of want to mess around with iOS, especially in light of the fact that the kernel is now unencrypted, might be able to discover new flaws within the kernel that could eventually lead to an exploit that they could pass along to Pangu, official jailbreak developers. So while Pangu would have been absolutely fine without this new measure and direction that Apple decided to take with iOS 10's kernel. Again, this could improve the discovery rate of brand new exploitable vulnerabilities that are usable inside of jailbreaks. This is absolutely groundbreaking. I've actually talked about it previously. I will have that link down below in the more info for those of you who want to actually learn more about that move and the direction that Apple decided to take with iOS 10. And finally, one last thing that I wanted to talk about before we wrap up is really just Tai G. I mean, where is Taiji, right? We've had so many new Pangu jailbreak utilities since the last version of Taiji dropped, including the one for iOS 9.0.2, 9.1, and of course now 9.3.3. I mean, it's been forever, it feels like, since Taiji dropped a jailbreak. Well, the last thing that we heard from them is that they still have interest in developing and releasing new jailbreak utilities, and of course that their interests haven't faded and that they're going to continue to pursue it. But we haven't seen anything that actually backs that up. We have yet to see a new jailbreak. We have yet to hear anything from the group. And of course, they haven't really demonstrated anything on a public forum the way that Pangu has, of course, at MoSec and at other security conferences, including the Black Hat conference. So at this point, Taiji kind of seems to be a wild card. We may get a jailbreak from them. We may not, but we should kind of turn our direction toward Pangu moving forward into the future. They're the ones we need to keep our eyes on. All right, guys, so that wraps up everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. I really do hope you liked it and it helped you out. Again, if I were to give an ETA on the release of a new jailbreak, it would likely be no later than the end of October. Hopefully, we'll have one by Halloween. Again, if you want to be updated even more often, such as when I release new videos covering anything in the realm of jailbreaking or the iPhone 7, be sure to click the subscribe button below next to my channel name, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is ICU signing. Out. Join the iCrack Your Eye Device community on Patreon to help out the channel and to be featured in videos similar to these top contributors. Click the link on your screens now if you're on desktop or check below.